Hey, Anthony Pichabone here, founder of AP Growth. And in today's video, I'm gonna give a breakdown of where I see Tesla stock going in the near term. And I'm also gonna show the trades I made on my account. If you're looking to build your wealth in the stock market with options trading, day trading, or swing trading, you're definitely gonna to wanna to subscribe. I just wanna help you achieve financial freedom in the stock market. So if you wanna do that, then this is the channel for you. Hit that thumbs up button at the end if you appreciate it, and let's dive into it. Tesla had a fantastic day, up 7.5% because Elon Musk announced that he was done selling in the Babylon B interview that went live last night. We had one more form come out with Elon selling a few more shares, but he concluded he was done. So pre-market, we were already up at 970 and then just went up all day and finished the day at 1008. Post-market, we're at 1011. In the previous video, I said that we can't get too excited about the increase in the stock price yesterday until Tesla breaks 1000 and closes above it. And we did that all in one day. We're now above all the EMAs on the daily chart. So the 20 EMA was at 999, which was 1,000. We broke above, closed above. Anytime a stock is above all EMAs and the 20 is above the 50, which is above the 100, which is above the 150, which is above the 200, we're now in a bullish stance, which means the path of least resistance is up. It doesn't mean that we can't pull back under 1,000. It just means that it's more likely for us to continue higher. On the daily chart, we have this really nice inflection up on the RSI. This is now a true bottom with the stochastic. So we bottomed and we turned to head up. That's more of a confirmation that we are bottoming and we're likely to continue higher now. Percent R is already at the bottom and inflecting up. Breaking it down to the four hour chart, this is really good to see. So the RSI is almost at 70, but it is at least at 65. I wanted us to break right here, which is a thousand and close above it because that will give us a little more confidence that we broke the downtrend. We reset all of the indicators, which means we're now at the bottom of the indicators turning to head up, which means theoretically there's so much room to run. Keep in mind, we really see the explosive movements when the RSI gets above 70. It may take two to four weeks for us to really build to get back up to over 70 and then have an explosive move back to all-time highs. But since we're above all the EMAs, it's more likely for us to actually use 1,000 as support instead of going back down, breaking 900 again. In terms of my positions, I was selling a lot of puts when Tesla stock was at 900 and below. I was selling puts at the 850 strike, selling puts at the 900 strike, selling puts at the 940 strike, expiring at December 31st to buy Tesla stock shares at a cheaper price. One example of one of the trades was selling two puts at the 940 strike expiring at the end of the year. And then I collected $38.40 for each one of those contracts, which means I got paid $38. So if these did get executed, meaning that Tesla stock finished below 940 by the end of the year, then I'm forced to buy 200 shares basically at 902 per share each. So what I did today is I sold three puts at the 1000 strike expiring at the end of the month for an average cost basis of $30 each. So then it'd be like I'm buying shares of Tesla stock at 970 each. Now, what's so good is I sold puts previously at the 850 and the 820 strike and collected $20 each on those premiums. So when you add up all the premiums, if we assume that Tesla finishes just below 1000 at the end of the year, then I'm forced to buy these 300 shares at 1000 each. But I did the math and I collected over $230 of premium for all the puts that I sold when Tesla was at 900 combined with these three puts at 1000. If you divide the $230 I collected in premium by, by three, because I'm buying 300 shares, then it's more like I'm buying 300 shares of Tesla stock at $920 per share each. And I was trimming my Tesla stock position when Tesla was 1000. So I sold some shares at 1100 and then I sold 200 shares at 1000 and then I sold 100 more shares at 935. I bought those 100 shares back at 915. That's why I have about $600,000 in cash because I'm still down about 300 shares of Tesla stock from what I had before. And I'd like to buy those 300 back, but I wanna do it cheaper than when I sold them previously. So by selling it and having cash, I was able to sell puts using the cash and using the buying power, collect premium, and then if those shares get executed at the 1,000 strike, based on the premium I collected, it's like I bought 300 shares at 920 or 925 per share each. All in all, reducing my cost basis and being better off in the long run. So that's one way you can actually use your cash or use your buying power to trade around and buy shares. In this account I have right here, this, this is my account that I'm allowing myself to trade with. I just created a rule with myself that I wanna keep at least half of the account value into Tesla stock and the rest I'm allowed to trade with. I have three other accounts that is purely Tesla stock where I just own Tesla shares and I don't touch them. 
This account is the account where I'm allowed to trade and I wanna see if I'm able to make outsized returns by having a significant portion in cash or other positions to make more money to buy more Tesla shares. That's basically what the purpose of this account is right here. So I'm using my buying power to sell, strangle, sell options or trade around based on the technicals and based on indicators. So that way I can reduce my cost based on Tesla stock and accumulate more shares. All those strangles we talked about in previous videos are really decreasing in value. So they're basically gonna expire worthless. We don't have a lot more premium left in most of these positions. What basically happened too is the VIX decreased significantly. When the volatility decreases so aggressively, all those options decrease in value. So, so many of my options contracts that are expiring next week don't have much value left in them. Like this one has $600 left, $500, $500. I closed out some positions today because there's only $100 or $200 left in premium because the volatility contracted so much. When the VIX is up so high, if you just look in the last five days, there was so much uncertainty of like a stock crash coming and the VIX spiked. Ever since the VIX was over 20, I was using all of my buying power to put on all these strangles, sell puts, sell calls, because when the volatility contracts, I knew that the value of all these contracts would decrease in value so much. So I was opening new positions, a lot of them right around here in Friday, December 17th, and then a couple on Monday, but just when it spiked to Monday, my account decreased in value so much. Uh, I was losing about 60,000 in one day, just because the volatility increased so much. And I already had a lot of positions of strangles where I was selling puts or selling calls. So they all inflated in price and showed myself at a larger loss, even if the price didn't change that drastically. I waited before adjusting positions and the VIX decreased significantly and all the premium just got deleted and I was massively in the profit. As you can see yesterday, my account went up 65,000. Today, it's up another 45,000. Yesterday, I opened a bull call spread, which means I bought the 950 strike, sold the 970 strike. And what this does is this gives me a max return of over 100%. As long as Tesla is over 1,000 next week or beginning of January, these calls will be up 100%. So my average cost basis was $8.60. They're now worth 12.9 cents. I'm up over 50% in two days by Tesla stock going from 900 to 1. 1000 and if tesla stays at 1000 this position will be up 100 percent. and you might be thinking how is this possible it's because i'm selling an out of the money call and buying a closer call i'll open a new position to show you a, as a theoretical example so let's say we think that when earnings comes out we think tesla stock is going to trade at 1200 or higher if we think that then what we'll do is we'll go to the january 28th expiration we would buy an 1100 call and then we would sell a 1200 call. We get these two legs, it's called a bull call. So you're buying the 1100 strike, you're selling the 1200 strike. Let's say we do that with 10 contracts. The solid line is what our profit would be on expiration. So if Tesla is trading at 1150, we would have a profit of $30,000. This is by expiration, so this is by the end of January. If Tesla is trading at 1200, then we would have the max gain, which is $77,000, and we're risking $23,000. So the gain would be 331% if Tesla stock is at $1,200 per share at the end of January. So if you thought that, then you would put this position on right now, and you could do it with one contract. So if you have a smaller account, then let's say we do one contract, well, you're risking 2,300, but your max gain is 7,600. Your break even is 1,123. So if Tesla is 1,123 by the end of January, then you break even and you have 2,320. However, if Tesla is below 1,100, you go straight to the max loss, which is 2,300, which is all the money. So you would put this position on if you think that Tesla is gonna rise significantly, but not go to the absolute moon, meaning 1,400, 1,500, because again, you don't make any more money after $1,200 per share, the whole gain is capped. This is really good if you think that the stock will go up a decent amount, 10, 20% in a relatively short time frame, but you don't think it's gonna go up 50% or super explosive. Because if you did that, then you would just buy the call options on its own and you wouldn't cap off the gain by selling the further out of the money strike. And I put that position on when Tesla was trading at 920. So Tesla was trading at 920. I bought the 950 strike January 7, sold the 970 strike January 7 to cap uh, the gain. And what that position did was it allowed me to earn a 120% return if Tesla stock is at $1,000 per share or higher by the beginning of January. I just needed an 8% increase in the stock price from now to the beginning of January. If I got that, then I'm up 120% on my, my position.
However, if Tesla stock is trading at 950 by the beginning of January, then I lose all the money. Now I'll just quickly go through all the other positions I have. You have the Nvidia Strangle, 240 put, 340 call. What's so awesome is my average price was $3.12. This is a big position of mine because it's 50 contracts. Nvidia is not a small stock, so this was a lot of buying power. 50 contracts times $3.12 is $15,500. So I collected $15,500 in premium and there's now $2,843 left in premium left. This expires next week, December 31st. So from now to December 31st, I'll collect an extra 2,843 as long as Nvidia is above 240 and below 340. Just over three weeks, I earned $15,000 as long as this still expires worthless. Today, I closed the 850 puts I sold on Tesla stock. All the premium got eaten up and it was about $2,000 worth of premium. Next one is on Blink here, the Strangle, 26 strike put, 38 strike call. There's $3,000 left of premium on this one and this one will likely expire worthless. It's expiring next week. Rivian, the 90 strike put, 135 strike call. This one was really red when Rivian fell below 90, it was at 89, plus with the volatility higher yesterday. But combined with the bounce we got yesterday and today the volatility decreasing drastically, we're already back in the green on this position. Just so you know, two days ago when Rivian was trading just below $90 per share, this market value was $11,000. And when I, I sold 20 contracts for $1.93, which means I collected about $3,800 and this value was eleven thousand dollars so if i closed out the position when rivian fell to 89 then i would have had to give back the three thousand eight hundred i collected plus the difference between three thousand eight hundred and eleven thousand so we're talking about a seven thousand dollar loss to close out the position but because i waited just two days and rivian bounced and then volatility contracted it went from 11,000 in value to 3,500. So we're now back to in the green on the position. I closed out the SPY strangle. There was only about $500 left in premium because again, the volatility contracted immensely and I collected about $6,000 on this position. So that was, a, a, that was an awesome trade. It was a 439 put, 490 call. Lucid, we had a short strangle here, selling the 30 puts and the 55 strike call. We collected $1.32 on 60 contracts, which is about $7,500 that we collected. And there's now only $1,270 left in premium. So already collected $6,000 at the premium. And then this expires next week, December 31st. Next one is on Qualcomm, the 160 puts and the 205 call. We did 40 contracts, so we collected about $5,000 and there's now only $1,145 left in premium. Every single one of these positions expires at the end of the year. I wanted to start fresh January, so any position I put on or had put on, I made sure that it ended December 31st because I want to start January with all fresh buying power and a lot of cash and then look everything from a fresh perspective and start placing trades accordingly. We have another one on Blink. This is the 20 put and 35 strike call. Not much premium left here. It was 50 contracts and we collected 32 cents. So this was $1,500. That's now $500. Next one is on Roblox. We sold the 85 strike put and then bought the 80 strike put to cap the loss in case Roblox fell to fill the gap below. We collected 40 cents. 40 cents times 50 contracts is $2,000. There's now $500 left in premium. So as long as Roblox stays about 85, which I think it will, then this will go to zero. And next one is on a firm, 85 strike put, the 130 strike call. We collected a lot of money in this one. So 30 contracts times 4.6 is about $13,000, $14,000. And there's now only $2,368 left in premium. Another one on a firm, 75 strike put, 130 strike call. We collected 2,800 on this one because $1.40 times 20 equals 2,800. And there's only $600 left in that one. Another one on a firm, which is an 85 strike put, 135 strike call, 40 contracts at $2, which is $8,000 we collected, and there's 2,900 left on that one. Next one on PayPal, 10 contracts, we collected 1,700, and there's now 361 left in premium. SoFi, we put this one on like yesterday, just supposed to be 50 contracts, so 50 contracts, times 35 cents is about uh, 16, $1,700. And there's now $600 left in premium on that one. There's the 1,000 strike puts, and I put that on three puts. We collected $30 for each one of those, which is about $9,000. And that is at the end of the year. So as long as Tesla is above 1,000, this expires worthless, but I actually want this to expire in the money so that we can buy the shares for under 1,000. And then the last one here is Lucid. It's the 60 strike call. We put this one on a while back and we did 40 contracts for 40 cents which is $1,600 and there's now $200 left in premium on this one. All in all, we have no positions in the danger and I'm feeling fantastic. A few days ago, wasn't feeling so fantastic. We were about to potentially take some big losses, but 
The whole account is looking fantastic and I'm excited to start the year fresh. Let me know what stocks you'd like me to cover if you'd like me to analyze any, any stocks of yours. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe for more videos just like this. My goal is to help you achieve financial freedom in the stock market with option trading, day trading, and swing trading. Hit that thumbs up button if you appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video.